I want you to think about a time where you've been hurt by somebody, like really, really hurt by somebody. Now, for me personally, I, I, I relate to this. It's like you feel like I know God wants me to forgive this person, but in your heart, you feel like I could never forgive them. Like, how could I really? And so what we often do, at least I've experienced this, is we head to one of two different routes. And these things pose as counterfeit forgiveness. They're ways of us avoiding really forgiving someone. And I'm going to share those two cycles with you, but I'm also going to share the true cycle of forgiveness and a key point that I've never known about forgiveness that really changed the way I looked at it. So let's dive in. Quick thing before we carry on, if you're interested in supporting what I'm doing here in making this content to help you follow Jesus daily, I'd encourage you to click the link in my description and sign up to Patreon today. Our content isn't super clickbaity. It's not about new or culture or politics, the things that often get the most traction and attention on this platform. But I believe it's important and it's going to help you and it's helping people. So if you want to get behind that mission, it would be a huge blessing if you signed up to Patreon down below. Now, onto the video. The first cycle is what I call the forget cycle. We think about God and God forgets our sins as far as the east is from the west. He remembers them no more. We see that as obviously a good example. But instead of really forget it, forgiving and forgetting, we just forget. We just forget. And what this leads us to is denial. So here's the cycle. Here's the cycle. See if you relate to this. We get in the cycle of denial. Okay, you know what? It didn't really hurt that bad. It didn't really hurt that bad. What they did to me, no, I'm probably just oversensitive or um, I took it too personally or I'm a strong Christian, so I should be able to deal with it and not, it doesn't, I don't need to make it a big deal. So we deny, we deny how we feel. And, you know, and then what happens is we feel hurt. We feel hurt because we can't avoid feeling hurt. But what that leads to is numbness. If you feel hurt and you deny that you're feeling hurt, you become numb to it. Think about when you were younger, okay? You're in the backyard, maybe you're like 11 years old or so, and you're climbing this big tree. You're higher than you ever have been before. You're really proud of yourself. You're like, wow, I'm so, I'm so high. You see the top of your own, your parents' house, and you're like, wow, I'm so high up. All of a sudden, your foot slips, and you're sliding down this tree. You try to grab on for your life, and as you grab, the, the, the bark scrapes at your arm, peeling off skin, and you fall down to the ground, twisting your ankle. All of a sudden, you look at your arm, and you're like, wow, oh my goodness, this is really bad. You're embarrassed. You don't want to get in trouble. You, uh, you feel like maybe you won't be able to like, climb trees again if, they, if your parents find out. So you grab this old t-shirt, and you wrap it around it. You know, you're trying to hide it from your parents after you know one day, and then two days, and then maybe a week goes by. What happens? Well, if it's a bad cut, bad injury, that wound becomes infected. In an extreme scenario, maybe, that, that arm gets amputated, okay? So how does this relate to forgiveness? Well, a wound, a wound that is not acknowledged and a wound that is not treated, it gets infected, it rots, and it becomes numb and it's amputated. So think about that part of yourself. If you are constantly denying how you feel, nothing is going to feel real. You're going to be disconnected from how you feel about a lot of things. And in that sense, that those emotions are amputated. Now, people engage in this kind of denial. Why? Because it's effective. It's really effective. Um, I've heard it spoken of as spiritual bypassing, spiritual bypassing. And it was coined by this guy, this Buddhist, who experienced um, the Buddhist culture and how many of them are experiencing deep pain, but they were kind of passing it off as not important or not relevant or suppre suppressing it as a sign of their own spiritual virtue. And I think us within the Christian community, when we've been hurt, we can be in the same realm. Okay, you know what? I wasn't really hurt. No, it's fine. I have super good faith in God. I'm okay. I'm fine. But what are we doing? We're not treating the wound. We're not feeling the, the real hurt that exists. Okay, so this is kind of a way of sidestepping forgiveness. It's not forgiveness. It's denying that there's been any hurt at all. But Truly, the hurt has been real, and when hurt has happened, it's going to get out somehow. So the second cycle of counterfeit forgiveness, I guess you could call it, is festering. The first one was forgetting. Now this one is festering. What happens when you've been hurt? If you're not going to deny it, okay, you're going to sit in it. Wow, I've been hurt. How could they do that to me? How could they hurt me like that? You feel angry. You feel bitter at them. And what happens when you stew in that? Well, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And so you see this cycle here. You have hurt because we all experience hurt, right? 
anger and then bitterness, either anger and bitterness at the other person who hurts you or anger and bitterness at God for allowing it to happen. And, and why do we want to sit in this? Well, it feels good. It feels good. It feels like a solution. We can't really like get back at the person in the way that we want to. We can't change the past. And so we feel like holding on to this anger and this bitterness and maybe some self-loathing is a way, is a grasp at control, is a grasp at rectifying the situation, but it's not. It's not forgiveness and it's not a solution at all. But you see, many men get caught up in this bitterness, this anger, and it comes out in many different ways towards the people in their life or the family that they have. Um, It's because it's another way of not really dealing with the pain. It's a way of grasping at control. So just as denial is denying that the pain exists, uh, this way is acknowledging the pain, but stewing in it and never healing from it. In Ephesians 4.31, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, among with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you. Now, this brings us to a fork in the road, right? Maybe you've been caught up in denial. Maybe you've been caught up in bitterness or anger or whatever. The Bible is clear here to put that away, to forgive one another as God has forgiven you, to be tenderhearted. That's hard. That hurts. Jesus answered a question about this because they were, you know, people obviously around him were asking, okay, how many times am I supposed to forgive or when when do I forgive? And Jesus, you know, wanting to bring clarity to the situation, tells them through a parable. So let's go into the parable. It's in Matthew 18, verse 21, if you're interested in following along. But let me just give you a synopsis of what the parable really tells about here. So basically, there's this master, right? And this master is taking account of who owes him money, right? After it's put out, okay, this is what you owe everyone, pay up. This one servant comes to him and says, I I can't pay this. I could never pay this. Please don't take away my children and my my house and everything that I have. Please have mercy on me. And the master looks at him and he had mercy on him. And pity on him and he forgave the debt. This was a great debt, one that he could never repay. Now, the same servant whose debt was forgiven, he goes to another servant, and this servant happens to owe him a few bucks, and 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 this servant says, you know, pay me what I'm what I'm due, pay me what you owe me. And the servant, other servant says, Well, you know, please have mercy on me. Tell you, don't take my stuff. But the the servant said, no, you know what? I'm going to put your kids in jail and your wife in jail and I'm going to take everything from you. Well, the master catches wind of this. And he says, how, how could you do this? You, 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 I forgave you, and yet you didn't forgive this other man who owed you much, much less. Now, there are two kind of lessons that we can learn from this, at least two. The first one is pretty obvious. It's we should forgive others because God has forgiven us. The second is a little bit hidden, but it plays right into our, our cycle of forgiveness, our cycle of true forgiveness. The first thing is take account. Now, that master, before he forgave the debt, he took account of what was owed of what had been lost, truly. And I think that's a rhythm for us, is that when you've been wronged, when you've been hurt, take account of what has been lost. We want to be so quick to jump into, okay, I'll just forgive the person. But what that ends up being is just a a counterfeit forgiveness, a fake forgiveness, a surface level forgiveness. Because how are you supposed to forgive which you don't really understand. How are you supposed to forgive when you, when you don't really know what you're forgiving? You need to understand all that has been lost in order to know what you are truly forgiving. And that's what taking account means, What to take account of what has been lost. And then where do you go from there? Grieve. Grieve that loss. Grieve that loss. Feel that loss. Don't deny that it's real. Don't just do in anger. But ultimately, that anger is a, is a pathway, is a sign that there's deep sadness there and there's deep pain there. You're trying to point it on somebody else. You're trying to just grasp at control somehow, but that is sadness. That's heartbrokenness. So grieve that. And then where do we go? Forgiveness. Then where do we go? Forgiveness. Now here's, here's one of the lies that I believe for a long time that isn't necessarily always true. Okay. When people talk about forgiveness, they say, you know, it's just about forgiving, forgiving them one time, one time, one time forgiveness, and then be done with it. Okay. The reality is, Yes, you're not bringing it up again and again, like holding their wrongs over them, right? Love keeps no account of wrongs. But the reality is, is that that hurt that that person caused might come up every day 
or every hour or every few minutes. And what do we to do with that? Because our heart feels the pain and we either want to deny or we want to go into bitterness. But where does God want us to go? Into forgiveness. And so we need to, pl- we need to play that out as m- much as the hurt is real, as, as many times as the hurt comes up. Okay, that image comes back to my mind or that feeling that they, you know, whatever, however I was taken advantage of or whatever they did to me, that m- memory comes back, that thought comes back. Okay, d- denial or bitterness or anger or where am I going? Forgiveness. Forgive them. Forgive them. Feel the, feel the pain, grieve that, forgive them. Feel the pain, grieve that, forgive them. Now that grieving and forgiving process kind of happens simultaneously. I think one of the lies that we believe is that we can't forgive until we're totally healed. When we're totally, we're not experiencing the pain of what they've done to us. I don't think that's true. Okay. I think those things are simultaneous. The forgiving process and the grieving process kind of go one uh, hand in hand and it's okay to forgive somebody and it's good. We're commanded to forgive somebody even when the pain is still present. And this is what's hard about it because we want to get to this place where it's not hurting us anymore because then forgiveness is easy. It's like, well, of course I'm going to forgive them. Like I don't care anymore. Forgiveness is so hard because that, that pain is so palatable. But that's why it's important that we don't take any of these other escape routes in order to not feel the pain and the weight of what they've done. Feel that pain. Feel that weight. Understand the ramifications of what they've done. Grieve that and forgive them again and again and again. Why? Because God has forgiven you. Now, understand what I'm saying here. When I'm saying you're forgiving them again and again and again, this is regard to one particular thing. Now, if they're continuing to wrong you and wrong you and wrong you, right, you're called to forgive them. Absolutely. But you're also called to put up boundaries, to not expose yourself to dangerous people, to not just be a, a dumb fool and and put yourself in the, the counsel and the company of, of bad people, right? So there might be some separation that needs to happen. There probably is, absolutely. But we're talking about kind of one specific hurt that this person has caused on you. You're going to continue to forgive that same hurt again and again and again as many times as that hurt comes up within you. Now, that pain is definitely real, but I couldn't make a video about forgiveness without giving you guys a warning. It's in Matthew 6, 14, and it says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. There's a level of pride that we have when we're not going to forgive somebody. We say, God should forgive me because I'm deserving of it, but I'm not going to forgive you because you're not. The reality is we're not deserving of God's grace and they're not deserving of our grace, but we extend it to them. We extend forgiveness and as as an example, as a picture of what God has done for us. Does it make your blood boil when you think about forgiving them? Does it make you angry? Makes sense. There's a place for biblical, holy anger when someone has done something distinctly and, and truly wrong. But there's also a place of saying, God has forgiven me so grandly and I want to be in this place of forgiving them. It's a process. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's definitely not. Like, I'm sure there's videos on YouTube where people are going to say, just forgive them and suck it up and just like whatever. It's hard. It might be the hardest thing you've ever had to do in certain cases, but it's right. And God calls you to it because of the great mercy that he showed you. And every time you need to forgive them, every time that pain wells within you again, remember what God has done for you. Remember the comfort that he's provided for you. And remember the healing that's happening. Even in the midst of forgiveness, it's providing you freedom. Not just them freedom, but you freedom from these bondages of anger and denial and numbness and all this stuff that is not forgiveness and it's not healing. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about how forgiveness has impacted your life, how it's been hard or some things that you've learned along the way. Let me know if you want me to talk more about forgiveness and what aspects you want me to focus in on. Thanks again to whoever supports this ministry and watching the content and subscribing and supporting on Patreon and and giving one-time donations. It's a huge blessing that I can continue to do this. So thank you so much. And until next time, God bless.